So it's a very cozy to some Oliver and uh, Jennifer. Welcome to today's talk. Uh, we are very happy to share what Caritas is doing. And I'm really, really happy to have two of you here. Yeah, hopefully more will come in. Yeah. So I just run through what uh, will happen in the presentation. And uh, I think because uh, it's a small group, any time that you have a question, just raise your hand and then we'll stop the slides and then for you to ask questions. So I think it's better because by the end of the talk, sometimes, sometimes we mean cannot remember the questions, uh, you know, and then sometimes even for us, it will be difficult to say, oh, where, you know, it lies, you know, in the presentation that you wanted to know. So feel free, you know, and, and uh, be at home and uh, just, just ask any questions that you want. Of course, we may not have all the answers, but we will try our best to answer all the questions. Yeah. So I want to introduce my staff first. Uh, Kelvin is here. They are the speakers. Uh, Philip, and then Eve, yeah, so, and myself, Christine, yes. Oh, hey, okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm not so high tech. So, for today, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, you know, just give you a warm welcome, and then uh, what we'll go through is that we want to show you what Caritas is doing in terms of God's love in action. Of course, very important, we'll share with you our mission and vision. And then, of course, what do we do, our outreach initiatives and the programs that we do. And I think especially important uh, for donors uh, who wants to know where your money goes into. So, and also, Caritas Family is all the member organizations that is under us. We have 28 member organizations. And then the, what is our guiding values that will guide us to run our services and also our work. And uh, of course, we also invite the community to join us in our work. And then we have a wrap up and of course Q&A. But since there's only a very small group, as I mentioned, we won't wait until the end when Q&A is uh, being asked. We will actually uh, answer any questions that you want in between the slides. All right, so let me introduce, Kelvin will take over from me. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everybody. Um, first thing first, uh, just some PDPA. So there'll be photos and videos taken during this presentation. Yep, so uh, just to note, if you, uh, if you edit, don't wish to be featured on any photos, please let us know, yep. So I'll just begin with a quote um, by Archbishop William Go at the opening of Agape Village, which is in Topayo. He said, every life is precious to us, more so when it's the life of the poor, the oppressed, the afflicted, and the abandoned. Yeah. So we begin with an opening prayer. So I just invite you to maybe uh, close your eyes and arrive and be aware of God's presence with us here today for this talk. And we bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you. You anoint us to bring glad tidings to the poor, Proclaim liberty to captives. Recover sight for the blind. Free the oppressed. And build communities in keeping with God's vision of justice. Through our reflections today, show us how to be light of the world, salt of the earth, seeds that sprout love, and leaven that infuses humanity with the desire to promote human dignity, and solidarity. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. So we are here in the Catholic 200 Festival. Welcome. Um, and we're looking back at the last 200 years of the Catholic Church and the Catholic faith in Singapore. And the Catholic Church is not just about 
the church itself, but it has actually impacted the development of our nation over the last 200 years. And it's in areas of education, in educa areas of healthcare, social justice, and dialogue between religions. So I'm going to take you on a journey back in time to when the first missionaries came. So let's look at the social mission journey over the years. In the early, early years of Singapore's history, actually, Catholic missionaries were one of the first few to set up and, and run orphanages in Singapore. Um, in the late 1800s, the colonial government actually asked the IJ sisters to help to run the Singapore General Ho Hospital and manage it. Uh, I don't know how, mu how many of you are familiar with Father Stephen Lee. So Father Stephen Lee actually uh, petitioned the government for some land to house the influx of Chinese migrants to Singapore. So the Chinese were actually uh, fleeing from persecution from China and they came to Singapore and Father Stephen Lee saw the plight of these migrants and they actually, uh, he actually was active in petitioning the government for some land and this is in Mandai area. Yeah, so if you go to Mandai, for those of you who have gone through national service, there's a Stephen Lee Road. It's named after Father Stephen Lee. Yeah. And then uh, Brother Vincent from the... Um, I need to get this right. <laughs> uh, Gabrielite Brothers. Uh, he experienced a lot of persecution during the Japanese occupation. And his experience during World War II actually led him to realize that there's a real need for um, help for people, uh, for, for families and young people. And that led him eventually to found uh, Boys Town. Uh, this is a shot uh, of the Franciscan missionaries of Divine Motherhood Sisters looking after tuberculosis patients. So an interesting thing happened in Singapore's history. Uh, at that time, tuberculosis was a very, very highly infectious uh, disease. Nobody wanted to care for tuberculosis patients and also lepers. So uh, actually the government asked the church, could we have help to look after the tuberculosis patients? So uh, the sisters actually took up the call to actually uh, look after them when nobody else wanted to do so. So this is actually really a rich part of our history and, and identity as Catholics. Yeah, we go to the places that um, nobody wants to go, serve the people that nobody wants to serve. So they also did such a great job <laughs> that the government actually asked them to help in the training of nurses. So this is a picture of uh, one of the sisters giving a lecture on uh, how to be a nurse to some trainee nurses. So if you want to see the fuller story, it's actually from a video called Our Catholic Light on the Archdiocese YouTube page. So that was the past. This is where we come from as Catholics, our identity. So now uh, I'll take you to the present. Let's look around at the issues. So in the past, a lot of the issues in, uh, in Singapore were basic needs. So like healthcare, uh, education, employment, and things like that. And today, uh, the situation has changed slightly. So uh, one of the groups that is particularly vulnerable is the elderly. So uh, as of 2019, it's estimated there are 67,000 over people aged 65 and above who live alone. Yeah. And the, project, the figure is projected to increase to 83,000 in about 10 years. Yeah. In 2017, elderly suicide rate hit a record high. So some of the common problems uh, are struggles cited by elderly is social disconnection, fear of being a burden to their family and to the community itself, and also impairments to their daily functioning. Uh, in the time of COVID in 2020, uh, Lions Befrienders was alerted to four attempted suicides during the circuit breaker period, up from an average of one every three to six months. Yeah, so this is a concern. Uh, in terms of mental health, uh, one in seven people in Singapore has or will experience a mental, health, mental disorder in their lifetime. 
So you see, uh, among the few of us here, there are more than seven. So it's statistically possible that one of us is facing a mental health challenge here. Yeah. And what's more worrying, I think, is that for youth uh, between 18 to 34 years, the, it's even uh, more stark, one in five. Yeah. So suicide remains the leading cause of death for people aged 10 to 29 in Singapore. Uh, during COVID, uh, calls to SOS during the circuit breaker period went up 36%. And uh, you'll be aware of the National Care Hotline, uh, which managed about 27 cases. Um, those people who were working from home, a lot of us who were working from home, uh, said they felt uh, stressed as compared to, interestingly, the frontliners. Yeah. Uh, now we talk about low income or no income. Uh, in terms of 2019, there were 78,000 over people who received financial assistance in Singapore. So these are the uh, statistics. Um, and these are the number of uh, people, employed residents, uh, who earn below 1,005, 1,500 a month. Yeah. During COVID, uh, Beyond Social Services actually was giving out financial aid, and they uh, released statistics that some of the families, some of the applicants who applied, they, before COVID, they were earning $1,600 per month. But during COVID, because of the different problems, like um, you couldn't work, jobs were lost, the income actually dropped to 420 per month. So you imagine $420 per month uh, that works out to be just over $10 a day, yeah? Uh, and you don't think about medical costs and other aspects which might be uh, a burden to the family. Uh, the other impact of COVID, of course, we all know was uh, family violence. So AWARE reported a 137% increase in calls from victims of domestic violence compared to the previous year in 2019. So that's where we are now, and I'll, this is the situation in Singapore. I'll now hand over to Philip, who will share about what Caritas is doing. Philip? Thanks, Calvin. Good morning. Um, I'd like to share with you how Caritas started, but before that, a uh, quick question. What does Caritas mean? Do you have any sense of that? Yes, you're right. It's uh, charity in Latin. And that's what we're about. You know, um, we were formed in 2006. Uh, by, we were created by the then Archbishop Nicholas Chef to be the social mission leader for all the Catholic charities in Singapore. And we serve beneficiaries regardless of their race or religion. So this is how we started in 2000. I'll take you through the timelines over three slides in terms of um, how we started and where we've been. So we started in 2006 um, when the then Archbishop Nicholas Chia sought to create Caritas as a way of uniting all the Catholic charities operating in Singapore at the time under one body so that we collectively can be uh, much more effective and collaborative together as uh, one social mission arm. In 2007 is when we started with 15 charities under the umbrella of Caritas. And we relaunched Charities Week in 2007 as a way of fundraising, continuing the work uh, of these Catholic charities. So having raised the funds, we also sought to increase the number of volunteers who could step up to serve all the beneficiaries through the charities that we have within Caritas. And later on in 2007, we started to distill the Catholic teachings into 10 principles as part of the Catholic social teaching. you hear about this a little more later. So in 2008, what we did was we tried to bring Catholic social teaching to life and started to create a study guide to help Catholics in Singapore understand the principles behind the Catholic social teaching and the 10 principles. 
Now, in 2010, we created a social mission conference to bring everyone together, the thought leaders, the experts, uh, policy makers, as well as the charity organizations and members of the public interested Catholics in the social mission of the church to get together and to share what we do, what can be done, and plot a way forward. And in 2010 as well, we launched a version of the Catholic social teaching for working adults. And how do I apply Catholic social teaching to my working life? In 2010 as well, uh, as part of uh, our own research and advocacy, we facilitated the creation of two new charities to address uh, service gaps that we noticed. And that is ABLE, which is, serves the physically handicapped individuals. And secondly, clarity for those who are mentally challenged. So moving on, in 2012, what we did was to create a round table, again, to facilitate conversations about what we can do together as a Catholic church in conjunction with policymakers, thought leaders in industry. And in 2013, was the groundbreaking for the Agape Village in Topayo. Are you familiar with Agape Village in Topayo? I see heads nodding, that's great. So my colleague Eve will tell you a bit more about Agape Village, and that's where everything comes together for us and all our 28 charities currently. We changed our logo in 2015 to align with Caritas Internationalists globally. And 2015 was when we held the opening and the blessing of Agape Village. And by 2016, we had celebrated 10 years of uh, the first year of um, Agape Village. So that marks the milestones uh, and where we've been to in the last 15 years. And this is our mission, this is our vision. And our mission is to collaborate amongst all the Catholic charities and provide leadership amongst them so that we can fulfill the church's social mission. You know, Christ taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves. That is the guiding light for us uh, at Caritas as well as all our charities. And in doing so, we want to be the visible sign of God's love for humanity demonstrated by Catholics living the principles and values of the Catholic social teaching. So Christ came to serve the poor, the sick, and the lepers. You know, today we continue that mission of his. Uh, today there are new lepers within our community, and that's whom we want to serve. So our role is to coordinate the social mission work, enable member organizations, and enabling member organizations could take in the form of grants to start a new charity uh, to fund their operations. But enablement also takes in the form of us uh, introducing to them opportunities, opportunities to create jobs for those who are currently unemployed and uh, living in rental flats. So those are the opportunities we create and um, to empower and to enable these member organizations. And in doing so, we mobilize the Catholic community so as to serve the poor regardless of race and religion. So that's our ultimate goal, to be God's love in action. The social services we render, they are important. They are important because they are the first means that we open up the hearts of people to know that there is hope, to know that there is love. In 2006, the then Archbishop Nicholas Chia called upon the Church to work as one body, 
rather than as different groups and charities. This led to the birth of Caritas. Caritas is the official social and community arm of the Catholic Church. It is the means by which the Catholic Church seeks to serve the last, the lost and the least. The role of Caritas is to provide leadership and facilitate collaboration. One initiative is the Caritas Singapore Agape Village. Agape Village is a truly integrated facility with member organisations working closely and holistically to ensure that anyone who walks through our doors gets all the help that this person needs. That girl, when he first came in, I could sense that he was very frightened, very agitated. He gradually opened up. What we do in care is to help them rediscover their dignity as a child of God. Ya sekarang uh, semakin banyak mendapat bantuan setelah suami saya masuk hospital ada beberapa kebajikan yang menolong termasuk juga IJCC uh, lebih banyak memberi kami lagi bantuan sehingga kami dapat untuk sekarang dapat menyiapkan makanan dan sebagainya IJCC juga mengajarkan anak saya membantu sesama tanpa memandang agama dan ras saya sangat berterima kasih. We welcome all children regardless of their race and religion. I really hope that we can continue to bring glory, to bring love, to bring joy and continue this mission as much as we can. The time has come for Caritas to play a much larger role, to work closely together as a family with other parts of the church so that the church's social mission goes beyond Caritas but to the entire church in Singapore as much as possible. We're now ready to move to the next phase, which is how can we engage the entire parish community more effectively so that the role of the church's social mission is shared by all. Last year, Friar Mike asked whether we could help with the disbursement of the Jubilee Solidarity Fund. And that required some form of uh, expertise in assessing the cases. Uh, they're coming in uh, to request for monetary support. Social worker. Uh, who actually referred us to Caritas. The social worker comes in and works with us to visit the family. Every parish can train some volunteers or staff. When you see someone coming in to just ask a question, is there something I can do to help you? If everyone realises that there's something that they can do, even you don't have money, you have your talent, your time, you can be a volunteer. Joining Caritas has really given me a whole different perspective on how I view social mission. I had uh, the exposure of meeting different groups. We walked at night to see the homeless and you know give them a, a token food and drink. So that opened my eyes that Singapore indeed does have people in need. My hope about uh, three to five years is that within every district in Singapore, there will be at least one parish that will have this kind of outreach service to the community. I see myself as an instrument, sometimes a broken instrument, and uh, I try to do my best. Sometimes at the end of our day, it can be physically and emotionally drained. But when we see these children developing into responsible, resilient individuals, we do feel a sense of fulfilment and joy. Every life is precious to us, more so when it's the life of the poor, the oppressed, the afflicted, and the abandoned. Because these are the people that Jesus in for. Hopefully, they experience an encounter with God that makes them change, that we are all equally broken in maybe different degrees at different times. 
but we are one. Come and be the manifestation of God's love and action. Join us by volunteering, supporting, or giving a donation. For more information, visit caritas-singapore.org. Okay, and with that, I'm going to hand over to Eve to tell you a bit more about the services. Hi, morning. My name is Eve. Um, I'll be sharing with you on Caritas outreach and initiatives and programs. So one of our major projects in Caritas is the Agape Village, which is located in Tuapayo, where 13 of our member organisations serve their clients. The idea behind this project is to provide a holistic support and care for people in need. It's a place where people come to seek for assistance, attend courses, have meetings, functions, and a lot more. Drop by one of these days to find out more. We even have a rooftop garden and a cafe. So what does Agape Village do, offers? They are professional counsellors, therapists, social workers, lawyers, educators, trainers, providing services for the people. We also have programmes for different target uh, groups, such as public talks for youth, for parents, health and wellness programme for the elderly. Pre-COVID time, we had physical session of share report twice weekly, targeting elderly who are 60 years and above to come together to exercise, work out, and enjoy a simple meal. We also do community engagement such as CSR, festival celebration where we invite different groups of communities from the neighbouring homes and our partnering social service organisation. There are also trainings provided by the Archdiocese Commission for the Pastoral Care of Migrant and Itinerant People, known as ACMI. They provide a variety of training and courses for domestic helper on every Sunday with a minimal fee. Abilities Beyond Limitation and Expectation, in short, is ABLE, has the Return to Work program. Agape Village provides spaces for rental where groups can use them for faith development workshop, fellowships and other events. And the main role is to deliver service with God's love and also to ensure the facilities are in good condition and the estate are well maintained. So these are the 13 organisations located in Agape Village. You may find some of them familiar, such as Monfort Care, SSVP and the rest. With co-location of these variety of services, it makes the life of people in need a little easier. Some of the organisations here have other centres in Singapore. The model Agape Village adopt is the integrated case management with the other organisation. More often than not, people in need face different and multiple issues. Many a time, they are required to go to different agencies for different assistance. For example, if a person calls the social service hotline, walks in or call our main line at Agape Village, he or she will be directed to Catholic Welfare Services, who is the lead case managing team in AV. The caseworker will then meet the client to understand his or her situation better and identify the presenting issues. Based on the needs, the caseworker will then call in the relevant organisation for discussion and develop a holistic care together. The lead case worker will then discuss with the clients on the various options for services and program. The care plan will be constantly reviewed and tweaked along the way. Based on the most pertinent issue, the lead case manager may change as required so as to move with the client in his or her journey. In this manner, the client need not repeat his or her story to different professionals which would be the case had the organisation are not located in one space or collaborated. This could be difficult or even traumatic for some. This is our way of preserving the dignity of the person. During the pandemic last, uh, since last year, Catholic Welfare Services collaborated with various parishes 
to offer space for night shelter to the homeless. Seeing the need for space, Agape Village also offered the two multi-purpose hall and logistic support for CWS to offer more shelter service. And also the Share Report program, which I mentioned earlier, had to cease due to COVID. Care calls were made to participants periodically to stay in touch with them and to share info on the resources they can get during the pandemic. Seeing that the situation will not allow physical sessions any sooner, they turned to Zumba online via Zoom with the elderly and they enjoyed the session. In February 2016, the parish engagement team was launched by the Caritas Board to engage, collaborate and support parish groups in living out their social mission and reach out to the most vulnerable in society. We initiated a one-day program, the Agape Experience for Confirmation Year Student from parishes. The program consists of praise and worship, skit, experiential activities, talk on CST, focusing on dignity of the human person and dignity of creation. However, due to the pandemic, most of the sessions have gone online. As the feedback was good, we extended the invitation to RCIA and RCIY upon request. This year, we even got requests to talk on dignity of creation to L7 and L8 students, as well as social mission talk to Premier 2. We hope to be able to cater to more requests in future. Caritas Formation Team focuses on CST with the aim of integrating faith into our lives for adults as well as youth in school. We support Catholic schools in bringing the social teaching to help them to strengthen their Catholic school culture and to also support the school in their values in action. My personal moral compass, widely known as PMC, is a year-long course delivered by Father David Garcia, a moral theologian who brings the knowledge of moral theology and the social teaching of the third church to participants to help them better understand this faith teaching and reflect on how we can apply them in our lives. Our executive director, Christine, also gives talks on suicide awareness to the youth ministry leaders, catechists and facilitators of Church of St. Francis of Assisi in January 2020. Christine has since given a number of talks to churches. These are some pictures of the Agape Experience online session and schools for talks on CST and MPMC lessons. Caritas Young Adults Committee is the Caritas Youth Wing. They serve to connect young adults to the social mission of the church through formation sessions as the online session with Father David on COVID-19. Conversation amongst young adults on social issues and faith and volunteering with our member organisation in serving those in need. Here are some pictures of different programmes by Caritas. There are Disciple Retreat, Review of Life, Into the Cave and many more. Caritas has captured monthly reflection from a few staff on social issues and it is published on our Facebook and website. Earlier, you have seen in the video, the Parish of St. Mary of the Angels reached out to the Catholic Social Workers Guild with the intention of setting up their own outreach office. Our Executive Director, Christine, proposed to Caritas Board to support St. Mary's plan in setting up, planning, and opening an outreach office in a parish. This office aimed to support parishioners or walk-ins seeking for assistance. In September 2020, Caritas Singapore and St. Mary signed an MOU, agreeing for Caritas to co-fund the employment of a social worker to support the setup and operation of their outreach office. Today, the outreach office is fully set up and Caritas will continue to provide supervision and consultancy to St. Mary. Caritas advocacy team highlights social issues and information through our social media and we also post written reflection on social issues to create greater awareness and allow fellow brothers and sisters to reflect on them through the lens of faith. The team also organised roundtable events to promote action and thought leadership in different causes. 
The last round table happened on 14 August 2020, titled Heal Our Home, which we talk about caring for creation. So in Octo October 2019, we launched a Care for Creation project to the community in hope of creating greater awareness. It is also one of our Catholic social teaching principles, Dignity of Creation, and it is in line with Pope Francis' encyclical Laudato Si. Then a kind donor donated her calories after she wind up her business, and a washing team was formed to encourage member organizations to use reusable at events or functions. We have also worked with OLPS Parish, with the washing team helping out in their RCIA with the aim of not using disposables. Just last month, we also collaborated with Church of St. Ignatius and organised a climate action conference, both online and physical event. We hope to encourage all parishes to start their own green ministries and create greater awareness and move the community to a more sustainable lifestyle for the good of future generations. That is all I prepared and thank you for your attention. I'll pass to Kelvin. Thank you, Eve. Uh, so we've gone through our Catholic identity and Catholic history the last 200 years and where social mission has really played a part of who we are as Catholics as well. Um, we've talked about, uh, Philip shared about Caritas and our mission. And I'll, sorry, before that, I also shared about the current situation in Singapore. And then Philip talked about our vision mission of Caritas and then Eve went through some of the uh, initiatives that Caritas has. So now uh, we'll have, we'll be to I'll be talking about Caritas Family in Action. Uh, so as you know, we have 28 member organizations uh, in the Caritas Singapore family. Uh, so we'll, I'll be talking about that. But before that, we'll have a little quiz. Yeah. So it's a fun quiz time. Hopefully it's fun. Yeah. Uh, so there's no, there's no right, okay, there's a right answer, but it's just, it's just for fun, okay? So everybody can participate. Uh, there are four questions. So the first question is, uh, which of the following is not a member organization of Caritas Singapore? So is it A, acts a call to share, B, Catholic Architectural Guild, C, Catholic Business Network, or D, Infant Jesus Homes and Children's Centre? So all those who think it's a, raise your hand. Okay. All those who think it's B, raise your hand. All those who think it's C, it's raise your hand. Okay. Anybody think it's D? <laughs> Gil, okay. So the correct answer is actually a call to share. So a call to share is actually, um, they focus on overseas missions. So they have missions to Vietnam, to uh, Thai uh, Thailand, uh, Cambodia and Philippines. Yeah. So they, uh, because Caritas looks at the local issues, uh, X is not actually under our sister organization, Caris. Yeah. So the Catholic Architectural Guild, Business Network, and IJHCC are actually member organizations. And later at five o'clock, uh, Catholic Business Network is giving a talk here as well on the journey with Christ, one of their programs. So well done. Uh, next question. Which organization serves persons with mental health conditions? So I think it was mentioned earlier. So is it A, ABLE, C, B, CARE, C, Clarity Singapore, or D, Marymount Center? So all those who think it's A, raise your hand. <laughs> B, C, oh yes, many people think it's C. D, raise your hand. Okay, the correct, the answer is uh, Clarity and today, if you go over to Catholic Center at Cana, uh, sorry, at Waterloo Street, sorry, level two, they're doing an exhibition there, so you can have a look at the, some of the programs that they run as well. Yeah. Okay. Third question. Uh, I'm not keeping score though. Uh, which organization was not set up by a religious order? Yeah. So these are all our member these are member organizations of Caritas, but which one was not set up by a religious order? So not set up by the nuns or the, the brothers. So is it A, Assisi Hospice, B, Boys Town, C, Hope House, or D, Morningstar Community Services? So A, B, C, and D. Yeah, so Morningstar Community Services is an organization that is actually set up by lay Catholics. 
Yeah, so this was in response to Arch, the then Archbishop Gregory Young's call for Catholics to be more engaged in social mission in Singapore. So this couple, uh, this group of um, lay Catholics felt the call to set up Morning Star Community Services. So they started really small, and then now they've grown and they have multiple, multiple uh, centres all across Singapore. Uh, the last question is, which organisation runs family service centres? So family service centres are actually community-based social providers that serve low-income and vulnerable individuals and families. So each area of Singapore has a family service centre. So is it uh, A, Catholic Welfare Services, B, Faith and Light Community, C, Mamre Oaks, or D, Monfort Care? Yes, and the answer is D, Monfort Care. So Monfort Care, among the 28 different member organisations, is the only one uh, that's, that runs family service centres. So they actually run a family service centre in Marine Parade, uh, Teluk Blanga and Kreta Aya. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow, they'll be having, you know, not tomorrow, Friday, they'll be having an uh, exhibition at level two of Catholic Centre. Uh, today, Mamre Oaks is having the exhibition at Catholic Centre and Catholic Welfare Services, they have an open house all week. You can go to them at Catholic Centre and today at four o'clock, uh, uh, Sister Geraldine from uh, St. Joseph's Home will be giving a talk in this location as well. So please join us if you can. So that's the quiz, four questions. Well done, everybody. Give yourself a round of applause. So that's a quick introduction to some of the member organisations. As mentioned, we have about 28 of uh, the member organisations, and you can see them here. We are one family, and uh, we work together to serve the needs of the community. Um, I won't go through all 28, but an easy way of remembering who we serve is actually through the different uh, groups of people or the different categories. Uh, so for example, we have families and children, the poor and elderly, which is largely taken care of by uh, Catholic Welfare Services. Persons with medical needs, so Mount Avernia is one of our uh, member organisations. Persons living with HIV AIDS, youth, uh, persons with disabilities, the incarcerated, so the Roman Catholic Prison Ministry is also our member organisation. Uh, overseas missions, also we have some. Uh, and then persons with mental health issues and migrants. And supporting all of these, uh, we also have guilds that are part of the family. So, for example, um, Catholic Lawyers Guild might come in to provide pro bono legal advice to somebody in need. So these are the different uh, categories of people. So uh, what do they do? Just a brief overview of some of the organizations. So Boys Town, you will know, they reach out to young people, uh, youth at risk. Uh, through different activities. Um, for Morningstar Community Services, they do after-school care. But during COVID, everything was shut down, right? During the circuit breaker period. So Morningstar Community Services actually applied to the government to, for exemption so they can continue providing the service. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's what Morningstar actually did. Uh, ACMI, the uh, reaching out to migrants, they adapted their outreach, so they reached out to the migrant workers in dormitories to provide some basic necessities. Another group that is, um, uh, has some issues in Singapore is transnational families and families which have mixed marriage. So one spouse is actually a foreigner and one spouse is Singaporean. Uh, so uh, ACMI also pivoted to um, serve them. Uh, a CC hospice also reached out during COVID to provide a uh, home care service uh, for their, their clients. Uh, over there is Kenosaville. So Kenosaville also uh, reached out to families in the area to, to provide basic necessities and food during COVID. Uh, and Clarity Singapore, which deals with people with mental health issues, uh, they actually adapted. So in the past, most of the therapy and uh, counseling was done face to face. But because of COVID, you couldn't really meet face to face. So they adapted and they have online counseling as well. So just this is, there's a lot of work that's happening uh, among the different organizations. It's just a, just a snapshot of what's, what's happening. So um, you may ask, okay, we're doing all, all these things um, to reach out to the poor, but what really are our guiding values? 
So our guiding values in Caritas and the Caritas Singapore family is really Catholic social teaching. Um, and it's about how do we connect our faith with our everyday life? How does our faith help us to build a better world? Um, in the past, there's always this misconception that if, you don't, if you're not involved in helping the poor or the needy, you don't really need to know about Catholic social teaching. But actually, Catholic social teaching is about how to live life as a Catholic in this world. So how can you be a better spouse? How can you be a good employer or employee? Also, it's covered in uh, Catholic social teaching. So it's a collection of teachings that aim to help us live our faith in daily lives, in our relationships with each other, in the face of issues and challenges like uh, the rise in uh, mental health issues in Singapore. What, what, what is the Catholic response to this? What, what guides us in, in responding to these challenges and the happenings in society and the world? So these principles actually provide a spiritual and practical wisdom of how to live life to the fullest. Uh, uh, as sons and daughters of God. Um, so there are actually 10 different principles you can see here of Catholic social teaching. I won't go through all of them. I'll just highlight uh, dignity. So dignity is really about recognizing that every person has dignity because they are made in the image and likeness of God. Right? They are a child of God. And so they have that dignity. We need to uh, respect that dignity in, in them. Um, in terms of uh, creation, for example, uh, we live in this world. We are stewards of the earth. How do we as Catholics respond to the climate crisis and uh, environmental issues? Uh, how do we be a good worker? And how is work not just a means of uh, receiving income to live our lives, but how does work actually sanctify us as well? Um, can work, your work in, uh, in your day-to-day -day life as an employee in an organization, how does that part of God's plan for creation in the world? Yeah. So um, you, on your chairs, you have a handout of the summary of uh, Catholic social teaching. Uh, if you want to learn more, uh, this afternoon, we also have a talk on how to live our life uh, as a Catholic in this modern world. So that's uh, Catholic social teaching. So now um, I've shared with you about uh, the different member organizations and the how, um, why we do what we do, our guiding values. I'll hand over to Philip to uh, go on to the next portion of invitation. Okay, I'm back. Um, so for this particular section, first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, all of you for being here. And the fact that you're here means you have an interest in the social me Hang on, I'm not using the mic. Let me repeat that. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for being here, number one. And number two, I think the fact that you're here means that you have a heart for the social mission of the church. And with that, uh, it'd be safe to say that in all likelihood, you would donate to Caritas during Charities Week. And I just want to say thank you. And I want to acknowledge that. And given that you're likely to be donors as well, I want to start off by also sharing some of the plans that we have going forward. Um, in terms of fundraising that we do, um, most of the funds that we get come from Charities Week, about 64% based on uh, a full calendar year last year. And Advent is about 9%, and other donations throughout other periods of time constitute the other 27%. Uh, this is Charities Week. That may seem familiar from this year. And Advent, they just kicked off. And we've been getting requests for different donation modes. And I just wanted to share with you um, the various donation modes that we currently accept and what's in the pipeline. Uh, obviously, checks, online donation through giving.sg are staples for us. Uh, gyros available, cash in person, credit card in person, as well as legacy giving through individuals' wills. Uh, on giving.sg, uh, one can start a fundraiser. And the most requested donation mode has been pay now. That's in the works. It may be in your request as well. That is in the works for 2022 next year. There's a bit of complexity for us. 
because most of our donors request for tax deductible uh, tax relief and with that we need to collect information. Pay now doesn't quite facilitate that as well. With pay now there is low information to collect information that will allow us to report to IRS. So that requires a bit of uh, IT technology work and that's in the plans for 2022. Okay, so moving on. Um, so this is where I want to talk about how you can support us. Um, you know, number one, you can be a volunteer. Uh, on our website, there are lists of uh, volunteering opportunities at our, some of our 28 member organizations. And that's one way to serve uh, and to be God's love in action. There are opportunities at the likes of IJHCC, for example. And what I love about, say, IJHCC is that they don't just serve the poor. They serve the poor with the intention of breaking the poverty cycle through education by uh, educating the kids. So those are opportunities that if you feel passionate about, that could be one way to serve the church and to be part of the church's social mission. Um, other opportunities that come about, uh, that we get comes through schools as well as companies. Um, with the schools, we tend to get getting requests now, not just Catholic schools, but uh, non-Catholic schools as well, whereby they want to, they want to have a program that will allow the students to develop their character uh, by sharing some of the elements of the Catholic social teaching. So all these, some of these uh, Catholic social teaching values are fairly universal. And through those volunteering opportunities for the students, it allows them to understand them, perhaps even experience it, and in doing so, um, you know, uh, develop themselves into better uh, adults and youths as they grow up. And in terms of companies, we do get requests from companies who want to have a CRSR program, and that we can facilitate for them through our member organizations as well, and potentially at uh, Agape Village. So those are largely three areas which individual schools and companies can step forward to be a part of the church's social mission, either volunteering as an individual, um, having schools and students and classes come forward, as well as company CSR. And last but not least, you know, if you like what you hear today and would like to get to know more, you can subscribe to us on our social media channels and we'll keep you posted in terms of what we do, what our member organizations do to be the manifestation of God's love and action. So Mother Teresa said, um, not all of us can do great things, but all of us can do small things with great love. Um, so even Archbishop at his ordination was inviting us also to be, as Catholics, to be light of the world uh, with a heart of compassion. So you've heard a lot about Caritas and um, a lot of information about Caritas, what we do, who we serve, uh, how you can be part of it. So now, um, because it's Catholic 200, uh, we also want to invite you to spend a few minutes in reflection. So um, I'm going to read the parable of the Good Samaritan. I just invite you to uh, listen. And then uh, during the parable, um, maybe you can ask yourself some questions. How does the parable and the sharing by us that you've heard today speak to you? Maybe it's just one small thing that uh, spoke to you. Uh, how am I moved? And then the other question will be, how can I see myself as God's love in action? So we just take a moment to uh, reflect, uh, and I'll read from the Gospel of Luke. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among, among robbers who stripped him and beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, 
when he came to that place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? So you just take a moment to imagine that scene. Where are you in that scene? How does that reflect on what you've heard today in the sharing? What might God be calling you during this Catholic 200 SG Festival week? Is there something that God is calling you in to do in your life or to be in your life? So we thank you, God, for this short time of reflection. We know that we will continue to ponder on this uh, parable and also um, what we've heard today. Uh, Lord, we ask you to help us to see what your call is for us. Amen. So, you know, I think in your uh, handouts you have all this. Yes, please stay connected with us. Because we also need <laughs> affirmation. Eh? So if we are doing well, give us uh, you know, uh, some encouragement so that we can continue the good work and all that. You know? But if you really need some information, do call us and write to us. Oh. Yeah. So all the numbers, I think, is also in the handout. So I just want to do a closing prayer. So uh, we pray for everyone here and I really pray that the three of you will be blessed because you take your time to come and understand you know, uh, what Caritas is doing and actually, as I always say, you know, one person and go up, when you go out and talk to five person, the five person talk to another five person, you know, just like uh, you know, in the Bible when the loaf of bread and, you know, is given out, it multiplies. So... Uh, so let us uh, close our eyes and uh, reflect on uh, the sharing that we have today. And we pray to God that we, God will bless the three of you and also all my staff and, and people who are here. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Glory to you, O Lord, our God. Your love calls us to be your people. By sharing our many and diverse gifts, we share in your mission. We ask you, Lord, to shape us into a community of faith. Nourish us by your word and sacraments that we may grow into the image of Jesus. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, heal us that we, in turn, may heal the wounded. Form us to be instruments of love, justice, and peace in our land, and send us to proclaim your saving word. 
Renew us, Lord, that we may renew the face of the earth. Amen. So thank you very much for being here.